We are having some of technical course. difficulties, which is totally understandable when you try to do uh, you know, ad hoc reporting and getting information to you as fast as we possibly can and making sure that it's accurate at the same time. So Donald Trump is on the line. I mean, we know him as the man behind lots of real estate in Manhattan. And of course, uh, Donald, I understand you were actually a witness to what happened this morning. Well, I have a window that looks directly at the World Trade Center, and I saw this huge explosion. I was with a group of people, and I, I, I really couldn't even believe it. And even, I think, worse than that, for years I've looked right directly at the building. I'd see the Empire State Building in the foreground and the World Trade Center in the background, and now I'm looking at absolutely nothing. It's just gone, and it's just hard to believe. Donald Allen Marcus here. Uh, your building is, uh, the Trump Tower, is uh, one of the uh, great tourist attractions uh, in the world. It's well known universally. Are you taking any uh, precautions there in light of what happened at the World Trade Center? Well, Alan, we've always had, as you know, very, very strong security, but there's very little you can do about planes crashing into a building. I mean, you look at Larry Silverstein, who's a terrific owner in New York and a very good friend of mine who I just called. I was very worried about him because I assume maybe he was in the building. He took possession of the building one week ago. As you know, he just bought the World Trade Center. Right. And uh, he was in his office, and he was getting ready to move into the World Trade Center over the next two weeks. So when I just spoke to him, there's nothing you can do when people are going to be bombing planes at your building. Now, well, I guess maybe the world is going to be changing, and maybe you're going to have F-16s flying all over the city, etc. But it's a pretty tough situation. Donald, uh, you have one of the landmark buildings down in the financial district, 40 Wall Street. Uh, did you have any damage, or did you know what, what's happened down there? Well, it was an amazing phone call I made. 40 Wall Street actually was the second tallest building in downtown Manhattan, and, and it was actually before the World Trade Center was the tallest. And then when they built the World Trade Center, it became known as the second tallest, and now it's the tallest. And I just spoke to my people, and they said it's the most unbelievable site. It's probably seven or eight blocks away from the World Trade Center, and yet Wall Street is littered with two feet of stone and brick and mortar and steel. And there are thousands of people walking over the, the debris over the Brooklyn Bridge, where they're sending them out over the Brooklyn Bridge to Brooklyn, and then I guess they're going to have to figure out how to get home from there. But they have between a foot and two feet of debris uh, right in front of a building that's probably, you would say, Alan, six or seven blocks away. Donald, this is Roland Smith. Uh, hi, Roland. You know, hi, how you doing I, on this kind of day? You know, at some point, we're going to put all this behind us, and you as a visionary, particularly in, uh, in New York real estate, what do you think that we ought to do as a city, as a people, uh, when all of this gets, when the morning stops, when, when the dead are, are honored, and, uh, and we've found out what caused it and maybe corrected it. What does the city need to do? Well, I guess the big thing that, that you really will have to do is never forget. You just can't forget that something like this happened. I was so disappointed when they closed the stock exchange, but of course, at some point, you had no choice. You know, when they initially announced it was closing, because you want to just say, the hell with it, you're going forward, nothing's going to change. But the fact is, something has changed very dramatically. And I think one of the very sad things is going to be when you look at the skyline of New York, which has become so emblazoned in your own memory, and you look in, at the skyline of New York and you see these buildings, these two buildings, whether you love them or don't love them, they were a great part of the skyline. And then when you look at the skyline after 2001, and you're going to see a skyline without these two buildings, you're going to say, what happened? People won't believe it. You know, when you show your children or your grandchildren in years to come what New York looked like in the year 2000, and then what New York looked like just a year later, they're going to say, what happened? Hey, Donald, it, uh, in, the year in, in the year 2000, Donald, you considered running for president. If, if, if you had done that and if you had been successful, what do you think uh, you'd be doing right now? Well, I, I'd be taking a very, very tough line, Alan. I mean, uh, you know, most people feel they know uh, uh, at least approximately the group of people that did this and where they are. but. Um, boy, would you have to take a hard line on this. This just can't be tolerated, and it's got to be very, very stern. This is, as you and I were discussing before, Alan, this was probably worse than Pearl Harbor. Many more people are dead, and, and you know, they don't know, they have no idea, but uh, I have somebody that was down there who witnessed at least 10 people jumping out of the building from 70 and 80 stories up in the air. 
I mean, you probably have 25 or 30,000 is the number I've heard, but I would think would be much more than that. I think the most of the damage will be caused not by even in the building in terms of the people dead, but by the people on the streets from falling debris. Donald, I, you're probably the best known builder, uh, particularly of, of, of great buildings in the city. There's a great deal of question about whether or not the damage and, and the ultimate destruction of the buildings was caused by the airplanes, by architectural defect, or possibly by bombs or, or aftershocks. Do you have any thoughts on that? Well, it was an architectural defect. You know, the World Trade Center was always known as a very, very strong building. Don't forget, that took a big bomb in the basement. Now, the basement is the most vulnerable place because that's your foundation. And it withstood that. And I got to see that area about three or four days after it took place because one of my structural engineers actually took me for a tour because he did the building. And I said, I can't believe it. The building was standing solid and half of the columns were blown out. I mean, so this was an unbelievably powerful building. Uh, if you know anything about structure, it was one of the first buildings that was built from the outside. The steel, the reason the World Trade Center had such narrow windows is that in between all the windows, you had the steel on the outside. So you had the steel on the outside of the building. That's why when I first looked, and you had big, heavy I-beams. When I first looked at it, I couldn't believe it because there was a hole in the steel. And this is steel that was, you remember the, the width of the windows in the World Trade Center, folks. I think, you, you know, if you were ever up there, they were quite narrow. And in between was this heavy steel. I said, how could a plane, even a plane, even a 767 or 747 or whatever it might have been, how could it possibly go through the steel? I happen to think that they had not only a plane, but they had bombs that exploded almost simultaneously. Because I just can't imagine anything being able to go through that wall. Most buildings are built with the steelers on the inside around the elevator shaft. This one was built from the outside, which is the strongest structure you can have, and it was almost just like a, uh, like a can of soup. You know, Donald, we were looking at pictures all morning long of that plane coming into uh, building number two, and when you see that uh, approach the, the far side, and then all of a sudden, within a matter of a millisecond, the explosion pops out the other side. Right. I just think that it was a plane with more than just fuel. I think, obviously, they were very big planes. They were going very rapidly because I was also watching where the plane seemed to be not only going fast, it seemed to be coming down into the building. So it was getting the speed from going downhill, so to speak. Uh, it just seemed to me that to do that kind of destruction is even more than a big plane because you're talking about taking out steel, the heaviest caliber steel that was used on a building. I mean, these buildings were rock solid. And, uh, you know, it's just an amazing, it's an amazing thing. It's, this country is different today, and, and it's going to be different than it ever was for many years to come. Very profound statement and very true. Donald, uh, one last question for you. Uh, given the, the, the magnitude of, 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 of how much of American commerce took place within the Twin Towers, what do you, as you're, you're an expert on this, what do you think is going to be the fallout over the next many several weeks, months, and even years, given what we have lost uh, in terms of those buildings going down and, and all that was within it? Well, I, I, as an example, Alan, and you might use them too, but I have an insurance company that was on the 102nd floor of the World Trade Center. They're gone. I don't know who's gone. I don't know anything other than their offices are no longer there. They're wiped out. Um, the Morgan Stanley Group, you know, Morgan Stanley, a big, powerful firm, they had 50 stories in the building, gone. I mean, you're talking about some firms that are just gone. Now, Morgan Stanley, in that case, had a lot of its offices in Midtown, and they had about half downtown. Morgan Stanley's a big, powerful firm. They're gone. Many firms had all of their offices, as you know, in the World Trade Center. It was 8 million square feet. 8 million square feet is the size of some cities. And we had 8 million square feet in the world, 4 million in each building. They were huge buildings, not only in height, but, you know, each, each floor was 50,000 feet. They were monstrous floors. Each floor was almost a, a city in itself, and they had 110 floors or so. So, um, you know, many firms that were easily recognizable for those of us in the financial world, for those of us that read the papers and see the financial pages, they're going to be gone. I mean, they're just not going to exist anymore. They're gone. Donald and Trump. Many of the people are gone with them. Donald Trump, thank you so very much for joining well, us. Thank we, you all. We really Good appreciate luck. it. Thank you. And Same you to you. You too. Our prayers are with everyone. Joanne Pileggi is going to bring us up to date.